Hey, it's Matt with McGee Farms. Got a couple of packages in today of some builds that we've got planned. Uh, haven't uh, had a whole lot of videos on the last couple of weeks, trying to get stuff set up, getting ready for fall, winter, hunting season and all that. And I do have a couple projects uh, over the winter we're gonna be working on. I've got a, one of our John Deere's that uh, has been in the shop for a while. All the engine stuff's about done, so we're gonna redo the plastic and the seat and uh, do some stuff with it. That'll be coming up. We've also got a CJ5 that uh, we're gonna uh, pretty much do a complete restore on right now. Uh, the engine and transmission's getting redone, and hopefully I'll have that back here within the next month, and we're gonna start with seats, the gauges, all that stuff. But uh, this is another project that I've been thinking about and our friends at Yitta Motor, Y-I-T-A Motor, uh, contacted me the other day and asked about it. So, uh, yeah, it's a uh, uh, dump cart or yard cart, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're going to unbox it, take a look at what's inside, start putting it together. And then I'm going to come back and I'll have a couple other videos. We're going to modify it for use around the farm, taking it off road a little bit, using it for, you know, hauling some gravel, hauling, uh, hauling deer out if need be, and just different stuff around the farm. Might even see if I can figure out some kind of a suspension on it to mount a seat or two if I've got, you know, extra people going with me where, you know, they can ride on it. But for right now, we're going to get these boxes open and see what we got in there. All right, I got the tape cut off. I actually had two boxes, and uh, they're two different proje products that uh, were coming in from them. I just thought there was more than they could fit in one box, but uh, we'll deal with the other one in another video. Unbox it, see what we got in here. 350-pound dump cart. And, uh, you know, they always have their little support stuff, which uh, they're actually pretty good about. I've had stuff that have come in missing parts, uh, basically because the box got tore in the uh, UPS or FedEx truck and, you know, lost some of the hardware. And uh, they're pretty good about uh, sending replacement parts uh, pretty quick on it. So we've got the instruction manual. We got their 800. We got all these parts in here and a whole lot of packing material. So we're gonna start bringing this out. We're gonna set it all out on the uh, grass and get rid of the packing material so we can start putting it together. So here's what you get once you get all the box and packing material out of the way. Uh, several parts that are just gonna be bolted together. Uh, pretty simple to put it together. A uh, few things with these, and I don't know about this one particularly. I have had these in the past. Uh, if you're using them in the yard and you're just going around, you know, where you mowed and, you know, leaves and all that, these tires are great. If you get using them heavy on a farm or property that you have where you're going through creeks and all, these tires don't hold up that well. And, I mean, not just these, every brand I've ever seen, they're just not made for that. And I'm going to have another video where I'm going to swap these tires out for some that'll hold up. So uh, keep an eye out for that. That should be upcoming uh, probably within a week or so of this video coming out as well. And I'll link it on the end. Uh, usually there's like a little screen that has suggest other videos. And I'll have that one on the end once I get it done. So now we got all the parts out. I'm going to grab this instruction manual and start putting stuff together. The first part is you got two bottom panels and you grab those two bottom panels and you're going to bolt them all together. A flathead screwdriver and a half inch ratchet is needed or or wrench. Ratchet was just made it the job a whole lot easier. Now next we're going to start putting some of the braces on and uh, then we should be about ready for the wheels and the sides. It's a pretty simple ins installation. So we got the first part, the floor done. Uh, one, if you got two pieces that you just bolt together, uh, one little tip on that 
uh, when you're doing it is you've got a flat piece and you got a piece with a lip. The flat pieces go together. If you do it the other way, then step two doesn't work, but I didn't realize it till I had it all put together and had to take it apart. Also, a flathead screwdriver and a half inch ratchet or wrench uh, is needed for these bolts. Now we're gonna do the next step and start getting it put together. All right, I've had a couple of days go by since the last video, because I, the last segment, because I had a little issues with this, and so I wanted to spend a little more time in case you do run onto it, and then these, uh, besides my channel, these videos go to the company and they look at them, so hopefully they can uh, correct it. Wasn't a big deal, but set this down. These pieces here, uh, the wings on them were just, they were too long. They wouldn't fit in, even trying to do them at an angle. And so what I ended up doing is getting my saws all out and uh, just trimming them about a half inch, three quarters of an inch on each side, which let them go in. They mount to the bottom, so they should be, you know, strong enough. Originally, I was trying to kind of move them back and forth. And you kind of see here, my first thought was, I would just trim this out and feed them in, but they were still too long. They, uh, unless there's some trick that I was not catching, uh, they would not fit in there no matter how hard I tried. And part of the issue too is you've got a center slot that has to uh, come in here and they, they wouldn't line up. I tried about a day and a half on all different ways of doing it and no luck. So I did trim them up uh it wasn't a big deal once you know i figured out hey get the saws all out and trim it up but you know if and it could be i just got one that was maybe cut a little wrong but if you do run into that uh, that fixed it pretty quickly and uh, really wasn't that big of a deal uh the other thing i ran into is you know on the day or two while i was dealing with that the uh instructions we had a big storm come through and i had them weighted down with some stuff underneath it and the wind picked them up and they are long gone so the rest of this i'm gonna have to figure out how to do on my own which again it's not that hard should be fairly simple to figure out so we're gonna go with the next steps uh next step i'm assuming is gonna be getting the tongue on and then doing the uh, axle and the wheels and this is kind of at a stage two where you can customize it if you want to uh, you know if you want to do it as a flatbed uh, at this point you know i don't have the sides on you set it up as a flat bed. you could also set it up as a stake bed at this point i mean i'm going to use it the regular way but i have seen people uh, do all kinds of different modifications with these now i did mount these are the little supports that hold the axle in. I have them mounted to the base. I do not have these top ones yet. And until you get the axle in there and it kind of set up, you uh, don't do those uh, quite yet. So uh, right now I'm uh, going to get the tongue on. I'm going to slide the axle in and uh, then tighten up the bolts in between and uh, put the wheels on. Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple to do. And once that's done, it's just down to putting the uh, sides on. All right, so I got it all put together now. The hitch, you got a little area with your release here that just kind of slides in. And then there's holes here where the axle goes through it. Now, most likely, once I start modifying this, I'm gonna change the axle out, uh, make it a little longer just because I've got, uh, I want to put some bigger wheels on. The, uh, the wheels uh, slid in, there's a washer that goes on each side, and then you've just got uh, some uh, cotter pins. And I misplaced the cotter pins to this, but I had some, uh, some different ones I just took off of uh, other stuff that I had to put on for the time being. So now I'm going to flip it over, and the trailer itself 
I got a flatbed at this point. And, you know, there are some purposes around the yard or farm. You could probably use a flatbed or make some stakes for it. But uh, I don't really need one, so I'm going to start putting the sides on. And uh, the front and the, and the two sides are the first ones to go. So I'm going to start attaching them. All right, so the sides I got on, uh, you start out with the bottom. You got several bolts here, all pretty simple to do. Once you get both sides, there's four bolts on each side. You put the front one in and you've got four bolts down here. And then each side you have one that connects it to the sides. And right now I've got everything just finger tight. I was uh, waiting till I got it all together to make sure it all fit right. And now I'm gonna tighten up the two, uh, the two that take the sides to the front. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna tighten up all the bolts. And then the last couple of steps, you got these little corner pieces. They're gonna go on here on each side. And then it's putting the tailgate on. So let me flip this over and tighten everything up and we'll get to the last steps. So I got everything finally put together and had to, had to pick up a few hay bales with the truck. I'm getting ready to run them down to the barn. So I figured, well, perfect time to try it out and use it. The uh, end pieces, like I said, just little uh, kind of corner pieces and putting the back in and really looking at it, uh, these things can be kind of uh, uh, modified for some different things. If uh, you wanted to put like some stakes in here, uh, they've got a small amount of tubing here that it would be pretty easy to put some up front and uh, make some sides for this if uh, you wanted to use it for hauling a little more. Uh, the one thing, like I said with these, if you're going to haul a lot, you might want to upgrade the tires a little bit. Uh, I mean, that's I've, from having these in the past, that's like one of the first and one of the easiest upgrades that you can do with these. And again, I'll be making another video on that as well. I know I keep talking that to death, but it's definitely something that uh, uh, is an easy and a good modification for these. So I'm going to fire it up and take this down to the barn. Let's look at the Yetta Motor 350 pound uh, dump cart. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're considering getting one of these, uh, really wasn't that bad putting it together. I did have to modify one little piece. Hopefully I just kind of got one that was a bit of a glitch, but it wasn't hard to do. And uh, you know, these things are great around the farm, great around the house. I'll put the link for this in the comment section at uh, at, well, in the comments section of the video. It's Matt from McGee Farms. If you enjoy the videos, please consider giving us a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. It's much appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Till next time, have a great day.